everyone. Welcome to our newest Wednesday workshop. Um, I see I have a couple of people joining us. Hi, everyone. We'll give everybody a second to get in. Today, we're going to be talking about scholarships uh, to study in China or Taiwan. So we'll give everybody a minute to jump in. Sorry, I'm uh, about a minute late. I had this complete uh, moment where I can remember how to do Instagram Live. That's what happens when you get old. All right. Looks like we have a few people in here. So Dajia Hao, we're going to talk a little bit about scholarships to pursue study in China or in Taiwan. And I've made some note cards today to help us a little bit. Um, no matter what your level is in studying um, Chinese or if you just wanna go abroad to either China or Taiwan, um, we are here to help you with that. And we do have scholarships for almost every level. So the first I'm gonna talk about is just a few of our traditional scholarships for undergraduate students to study abroad in China or Taiwan. And I have a note card here, except now I'm realizing it's backwards, uh, to talk about some of the scholarships we're working on. The first one we're gonna talk about is the Gilman Scholarship. This is a scholarship that UNG students love. We have lots of Gilman winners every year. Um, Gilman will fund you to go to any study abroad opportunity that is three weeks or more. Um, and the only requirement is that you be on the Pell Grant. So if you are a Pell Grant recipient, this is an awesome opportunity to pursue your research, uh, your study abroad desires. You can go to any country. You don't just have to go to China or Taiwan, but it's a good one that we find a lot of students start with and then maybe they look at other scholarships later down the road. Um, like I said, the Gilman, the only requirement is a three week or longer program and that you are on the Pell Grant. The Gilman does like to send students to lesser visited countries, so going somewhere in Asia like at China or Taiwan is definitely helpful. In addition to the Gilman, the other one um, that is very similar is Freeman Asia. If you are a student who is going abroad to anywhere in Asia, then the, the Freeman Asia is your next best bet. Um, I forgot to mention, Gilman has a few deadlines. I do wanna go back and say the next Gilman deadline is coming up in early October, and we're ready to help working students work on that Gilman application. Gilman has two uh, deadlines every year, and you can apply for a Gil Gilman up to a year in advance of when you plan to study abroad. So that is really pretty awesome because um, you'll know if you get the funding before you have to uh, put down any money on your study abroad program. Now the Freeman Asia is very, very similar for the Gilman. If you are eligible for the Gilman, you're likely going to be eligible for the Freeman Asia. The Freeman Asia requires that you spend eight weeks abroad in the summer or go on a fall or a spring trip, and it requires that you demonstrate financial need. So if you already are Pell Grant, then clearly you are demonstrating that financial need. The other neat thing about Freeman Asia is that you can stack it. So you could win potentially both the Gilman and the Freeman Asia and then use both to fund your study abroad. Um, like Gilman, Freeman Asia is open to any Asian country, it's just specific to Asia. So we do have a lot of students apply for both, and we've had several students um, in Taiwan last year, actually, who won both the Gilman and the Freeman Asia together. The next one that I want to talk about, we're going to actually skip down to the very bottom, the Critical Language Scholarship, the CLS. The CLS scholarship is the one that I think we have the most interest in. It is a really dynamic scholarship that funds students to go abroad and study a critical language for about seven to eight weeks in the summer. Um, it's pretty amazing, right? Uh, when you apply for the CLS, you're applying for both the scholarship and the funding. So we tend to have a lot of students apply for it and we've been fairly successful. The only sort of downside of the scholarship is, is it's so um, inviting and so exciting that a lot of people do apply for it. So it has a pretty um, low acceptance rate, but that's great. Um, that means that there are lots of people who wanna go out and study critical language. So the CLS can fund your study to China or Taiwan as well. Um, both, Chinese, both locations where you would study Chinese are acceptable on the CLS. So it's another really great one to think about. Like I said, we have students apply for it every year and we encourage students to apply for it in conjunction with other study abroad funding. Um, the CLS can also fund you to go to other 
critical language speaking countries. Um, so depending on what language you're interested in, if you're not here for just Chinese, you might take a look at it. Uh, and the CLS, while it requires two years of Chinese before you can apply for the Chinese one, there are a lot of other languages like Urdu, Punjabi, uh, Indonesian that don't require any previous language study. The last undergrad scholarship I wanna quickly go over, um, and I will pause right after we talk about this one in case you have any questions, is the Boren Scholarship. This is another one, not in its B-O-R-E-N, not boring. Um, I think I say that funny sometimes and people think it's the wrong thing, but the Boren Scholarship. The Boren Scholarship, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Whereas the Gilman and the Freeman Asia typically fund about up to 5,000, a little bit more if you're gonna be studying a critical language, the Warren Scholarship can fund up to $20,000, which is a lot of money to get you traveling to China or Taiwan. Um, the problem, not the problem, the sort of catch, I always joke, there's a catch when there's a lot of money, right? Uh, the catch with the Boren is that you do have to study a critical language. While um, if you're doing Gilman or if you're doing Freeman Asia, you don't have to physically study Chinese. We've had plenty of students who have gone to China on a Gilman who haven't been studying Chinese, who maybe have been studying something different in the country. For the Boren, you do have to study the language. The other catch with it is that you have to agree uh, to work for the federal government in a position of national security for a year upon graduation. And that requirement is flexible. You don't have to do it immediately after you graduate, but you do have to do it at some point, I think within the five years after you graduate. Um, for many students, this is a bonus, and I see it as a bonus. Um, if you are a born scholar, you have an easier time getting into some of those top national defense jobs that you might be looking at, things like the Foreign Service, um, Bureau of Cultural Affairs, those sorts of opportunities. So it's a really, really exceptional scholarship in that it's, it's not only offering to fund you to go abroad, but it's helping you down the road as you enter into your career. So it's another really, really great option. The other difference between Gilman and Freeman Asia, this one doesn't require any financial need. Um, it also doesn't say, it also doesn't have a GPA requirement. I would note the Freeman Asia does have a, a small GPA requirement of, I believe it's a three point, no, actually it's a little bit lower than that. I think it's a 2.7, I'll have to double check. Um, with the Boren, you do have to go abroad for six months plus um, to get the 20,000. Most of the students who are, are studying abroad on Boren are going for six months plus, but you could do that easily by going for an academic year or going from summer to fall or from spring to summer. We have a lot of students do that. Alternately, if you are a STEM student, if you are studying science, technology, engineering, and math, if you have labs in your background, you can apply for the Boren Summer STEM program. So STEM students only can go for eight weeks. So again, these are all three, and I'm gonna put them back up here again, all three really good options that may work for you. We do have a question coming in. Which scholarship is the best one to start looking at first? That is a great question. Um, of these scholarships, if you do demonstrate financial aid, I would start I would start with the Gilman and kind of move down the list. The CLS, I think, is always a great option. Um, there are just so many different scholarships or different places you can apply for on the CLS, different languages that you can apply for. So I would likely start, um, again, at the top. If you demonstrate financial need and then look down here pretty much any year um, that you are at UNG. Uh, for all of these, you do have to apply as you're enrolled in UNG, but you can apply for the CLS as you're graduating. So um, this is one that you could actually go on after you've graduated. Uh, with the Boren, a lot of times we're seeing our juniors go. Uh, it's more a junior level scholarship. You do have to come back to the US and graduate. You can't graduate while on your Boren. Another note for any graduate students joining us is the Boren is also a graduate fellowship. So there's the Boren Scholarship for undergrads, but then the Boren Fellowship for graduate students. Another really great opportunity for graduate students. We've had one student win it for graduate school. So I'm gonna pause there. Um, and again, most of these, except for the Boren, which you can also use for, for graduate school, are more of our undergraduate study abroad opportunities. And in a minute, I'm gonna switch over to some of our postgraduate opportunities, so opportunities to go uh, to China and to earn a master's. While I'm sort of waiting, I would also add that both China and Taiwan, the countries, do have their individual scholarships that you might wanna check out as well and that we can also help you look at. So there is quite a lot of opportunity, especially in Taiwan, to um, 
fund your graduate program long-term or to fund some undergraduate study. Okay, another question has come in. How competitive are these scholarships and what are my chances, uh, chances of receiving them? That is a great question. Uh, as I mentioned, the CLS is very competitive. It has about a 10% acceptance rate. However, I would note that uh, not this past year, but the previous year, we had four UNG students win it and we had four who were alternates. So even though it seems really competitive, 10% is, is pretty competitive, UNG students are exceptionally competitive at it as well. Um, as far as the Gilman, is concerned, it's Gilman and Bourne both come in between 20 and 30 percent every year. I think those are um, pretty solid numbers, but I think UNG typically we have a little bit of a higher acceptance rate for those. Um, we love working with our Gilman and Bourne students, and we try to work with you early, so you're applying to Gilman and Bourne. We're trying to apply to uh, Gilman by that first deadline so that if you don't get it, you can reapply at the second deadline, which is also a really great option. Um, and we've had a lot of really great luck with our born scholarships, especially from our Chinese flagship students, if we have any of you joining us today, as well as from our members of the Corps of Cadets. All right, so another updates around these programs with COVID-19. Great question. So for the current students who have already applied for Born and Gilman, they are in touch with uh, those students. Those students are not gonna be able to travel abroad until January, it looks like. Almost all government funding agencies for study abroad have put a pause on travel abroad until January. As of right now, all applications are moving forward for the coming year. Um, my advice is apply. Let's keep our fingers crossed and let's apply. Um, the agencies have been really good about allowing you to push out your study abroad. So if you win it, they're not taking it. They're saying, okay, we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to pause, but you can go ahead and plan for next summer instead. Um, Boren has not been able to do that, but the others have been able to push back um, your, your date of departure. Um, I anticipate that will continue and my advice is just apply for it. A great example is Freeman Asia. We had two students apply for the Freeman Asia Scholarship in April for summer study abroad. We all know in April, no one was going on summer study abroad. They had already started their applications and they wanted to finish them. So we did and both students were, were awarded, which is fantastic. And Freeman Asia is going to allow them to change their study abroad date to the next year. So it was really kind of awesome because they were able to go ahead and get funding for next year. So that's my advice um, is let's go ahead and apply for them as long as they're open and taking applications. Let's apply and keep our fingers crossed that we can use it either this year or potentially in the future. Okay, great questions. Uh, I wanna switch now to some other study abroad opportunities. Uh, and these are our postgraduate opportunities. So uh, the first one I'm gonna look at is very, very prestigious. This is, and I ran out of room on the card because it's so long, the Shoresman Scholarship. Um, before I go, any of these scholarships have requirements based on major? No, all of the ones that we are talking about today with the exception of the last one that we'll be looking at don't really have an exception based on major. Any student can apply for these. Uh, the Schwarzman Scholarship is a one year leadership focused masters in global affairs. So the Schwarzman fund students who are receiving a degree or have received a degree, so alumni, this is one for you that you can apply for, to go abroad um, and live at Schwarzman College for a year. Schwarzman College is located at, at Tsinghua University, which is absolutely beautiful. I got the amazing opportunity to go and visit Schwarzman and a few of the others we're gonna talk about a few years ago and was blown away by how nice the facilities are at all of these places. Uh, the Schwarzman is known as the Rhodes in China. So if you've heard of the Rhodes Scholarship, you know how competitive and prestigious it is. The Schwarzman is, is the equivalent, but in China. As I said, it's a one-year leadership-focused master's. And so what they're looking for is students who have been really, really active in leadership and who are looking to understand how China plays into global affairs. Um, so the actual program itself is part study, but also part internship, part working with other people in China and learning about um, what's going on in China and how it might affect worldwide programs. This one is definitely open to a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different majors as well. And when you get there, they will help you devise your plan of study um, 
pretty much based on what you want to do and where you're going. So it's a really, really great opportunity. Again, it's fully funded as well and very prestigious, and we're really eager to have a couple of students apply. You don't have to have Chinese to go, but they do require you to enroll in a Chinese class the first semester that you're there. So you're not required to go the whole time in Chinese, but you do have to learn some basic Chinese when you get there. Again, it's a really, really cool opportunity um, in an amazing location in Beijing, China. Now, right across the street from Schwarzman, almost, is um, its competitor, I would say, the Yenqing Academy of Peking University. So Yenqing Academy is a little bit older. Schwarzman's new. Um, it began in 2016, so it's a, a newly developed scholarship. Yenqing Academy is a good bit older, but it is located at um, Beida across the street. So it is located at Peking University. Um, a beautiful, beautiful campus, lots of trees, very shady, um, sort of an oasis in the heart of Beijing. Um, Yenqing Academy of Peking Studies uh, at Peking University offers a master's in China studies. Now, does this mean you have to have majored in Chinese before going to Yenqing? No. They accept a lot of previous uh, students who have done study in a lot of different areas. So when you're looking at um, the master's in China studies, it's not a master's in Chinese, it's a master's in China studies as related to your discipline. Um, and this one, like Schwarzman, is fully funded. It does fund uh, your tuition to earn the master's as well as your study over there. So I wanna read off of my screen some of the master's opportunities that are associated with this master's in China and Chinese studies. So some of them are a Master of Law in China Studies, which is for your uh, political science, international relations folks, a Master of Law in China Studies for law and society folks, a Master of Economics in China Studies, obviously econ, management, those sorts of majors, a Master of History in China Studies, so history, archaeology, and a Master of Literature, so literature and culture. Any, any of you interested in Chinese literature, this would be a great fit. And finally, a Master of Philosophy, so that's for philosophy and religion. So as you can see, while it's China Studies, it is all surrounding some of these other larger bits of China Studies. Okay, um, moving on from that one is um, the last one we're going to talk about today, and this really is for our flagship students out there or our Chinese majors out there. And so this is the Hopkins Nanjing Scholarship. Uh, this is a special collaboration between Hawk, Johns Hopkins University here in the U.S. and Nanjing uh, University down in Nanjing, China. So this one allows you to get a master's in Chinese. So if you've been diligently studying Chinese for the past few years, this is an absolutely amazing opportunity. They also um, could get you a certificate in Chinese studies. The cool thing about the Hopkins Nanjing program is if you're accepted and you graduate, you get a master's in Chinese that is respected in both the U.S. and China. And it's one of the only ones that uh, only, it is the only uh, degree that allows for that recognition in both countries. Uh, it does, like I said, require that you speak Chinese. You are going to be doing a good bit of Chinese study while you're there. Um, but that is the, the major requirement. So again, another really awesome opportunity. Hopkins Nanjing has a lot of scholarships associated with it. It is not fully funded as the others are, but it does have very, very many scholarships and it is an excellent fit for many of our students. So there you have it. Lots of opportunity to go to China and many of these are completely fully funded. So again, Schwarzman, uh, Yenqing scholars, completely fully funded. But then again, there are also lots of opportunity for undergraduate study as well. So um, I'll pause here to see if there are any questions. And note while we have been talking mainly about China, I would also note that Taiwan, you all know how much we love Taiwan uh, in my family. Uh, Taiwan also has a number of scholarships that are offered by the government there for graduate study as well as undergraduate study. Another option for study in China, Taiwan, or elsewhere is always the Fulbright as well. Um, they do have research programs in China, and the Taiwan Fulbright has the English teaching assistantship, it has research opportunities, and it also has master's opportunities. Um, there's a really neat one in international business that doesn't require any Chinese. Um, as a former Fulbright to Taiwan myself, I highly recommend the Fulbright program in Taiwan. But as someone who's been to Schwarzman, who's been to Yenqing, and who's been to Hopkins Nanjing, I also recommend those programs. They are outstanding. 
Um, so what's next? If any of these have struck your interest, please let us know. We would love to have you um, make an appointment, chat with us. Um, I'm going to be your main content contact for a lot of these Chinese scholarships simply because I've, I've visited them um, and I'm really excited about them. So we'd love to have someone apply. Uh, we have had a Hopkins Nanjing recipient before, but we've not had a Shoresman or a Yunxing Academy. So there you go. That is the gauntlet being thrown down. Uh, please, if you're interested in these, reach out and we'd love to get you started on the applications. The applications for all of these are going to be due in the fall and fall is rapidly approaching. You can email us at ncs, that's nationally competitive scholarships at ung.edu uh, if you'd like more information. Or you can simply set up an advising appointment, and I think all of this is, is hopefully populating on the video below, at ncsadvising.ung.edu. Um, again, I am Dr. Lin. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we hope to talk with you all soon about scholarships to China and Taiwan. Take care.